Joining us right now, he is the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, John Lott. Uh, John, there's so much stuff in the news about guns and gun control, especially here in Virginia with the new uh, legislation, uh, the new legislator uh, taking their, their seats there. We want to get into that, but I want to ask you about your new book, Dumbing Down the Courts, How Politics Keeps the Smartest Judges Off the Bench. This is a pet peeve of mine. We've got three co-equal branches of government, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. Seems like the media really only focuses on the first two. The judicial branch really gets ignored. Is, do we have a crisis in our courts right now? Well, I mean, we've seen how vicious the confirmation battles have gotten over time. And I originally wrote the book to try to explain why that's the case. And simply, as the government's gotten bigger, as more is at stake, as courts have gotten involved in everything in our lives, uh, you find that uh, uh, their battles have been worse for the smartest nominees. And there's a simple reason for that. You're unlikely to ever be on a jury. And you're very smart, you're a very articulate individual. And either side, both of you are, either side of a jury would, uh, of uh, the lawyers on either side, would strike you because you're worth more than one vote. You would pull jurors with you. And the same thing is true with judges, when you're talking about circuit court judges or Supreme Court judges. And because they're just not worried about how you're going to vote, they're worried about how you're going to influence other people on your panel, and also uh, opinions that you're going to write, how you're going to influence judges across the country. And so what you find over time is that we've had a dumbing down of the courts. We're not having as smart of people on the courts now as we'd have 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, you know, the other side, they don't mind if you put up a dumb person, but they're going to fight like hell if you're going to put up somebody who's going to be able to influence other judges uh, on the court there. And the irony is, At the same time, the cases they're going before the courts are becoming more and more complicated. Uh, The the smartest people who would be most able to deal with those things are being kept off the court. Wow. That's a very interesting theory for a book. I can't wait to read that. Uh, uh, Look, we want to also, because you are such an expert on guns in America and, and, and have been very, very effective at sort of knocking down all these false arguments that come up. Let me let me talk to you about what's going on. From the Associated Press, Richmond, Virginia, buoyed by the results of last year's election, Virginia gun control advocates and Democratic lawmakers say they are hopeful they can enact new measures restricting gun ownership by criminals and the mentally ill. Is that where it stops, or do you have other concerns? Well, I, I mean, I'm concerned about what's happening nationally across different states. I think The general trend has just been to make it more and more costly for people to have guns, whether they go and say, you know, they bring up background checks. But I think really what's going on are fees and other restrictions just to make it more costly for people to get guns. Look, the current background check system that we have is a complete mess. Virtually everybody who stopped is stopped is is a false positive. You know, people may remember... A good example of this is the late Senator Ted Kennedy. There were five times he was on the no-fly list. But I assume nobody would count that as five times we stopped a terrorist from flying on a plane. Right, exactly. But when when the president goes and says that there are two million prohibited people that have been stopped from uh, from, uh, buying a gun, what he really should be saying is there have been two million initial denials. And so when you go and you add means more names, uh, you know, for people who have mental illness. What you're really ending up picking up are millions of people who have names similar to those people uh, who are actually the ones who are going to be stopped. And the first thing that they need to do before they go and expand this is is to fix these problems. If private companies had anywhere near the false positive rate that the government has when it does it's background checks because companies do criminal background checks for employees all the time. These companies would be sued out of existence. And the problem is when you have two million people and virtually all of them are false positives, you're going to end up with a large number of people who really need to get a gun quickly for self-defense who are being stopped. And those types of 
costs in the system are never really talked about. See, and, and here's what I perceive as the problem, John Lott, because, you know, you are you look at the statistics, you look at the actual results, you look at the numbers, and you look at reports, and you come up with a fact-based and logical conclusion. On the other side, they have emotion. They have stories. They have this one incident that then drives the political conversation. And now we've got, I don't know if you heard this, I want to play it for you, Harvey Weinstein, big Hollywood mogul, right. he's planning a film. Listen to this. Do you own a gun? No. You don't have any guns? I never want to have a gun. I don't think we need guns in this country. And I hate it. And I think the NRA is a disaster area. And I'm going to actually make a movie. I shouldn't say this, but I'll tell it to you, Howard. Uh, I'm going to make a movie with Meryl Streep, and we're going to take this issue head on. And they're going to wish they weren't alive after I'm done with them. I mean, that's what Hollywood is planning. How do you fight that kind of power? Well, it's just not Hollywood. Uh, you know, I really think that there's going to be a huge battle coming up that people don't realize. You know, in the last year, a year ago, President Obama met with the heads of 23 large foundations who had been spending each one's millions or tens of millions of dollars each in the health care debate. And he said, look, you know, we've won the health care debate. Uh, it's time we focus on another issue. And he got all those heads of the 23 large foundations like Kaiser and Wellness to agree to put their money into pushing gun control research. You have Mayor Bloomberg's not just putting out ads in places like the Virginia gubernatorial race, but he, he announced about a year ago putting up $250 million for the Bloomberg School of Public Health at Johns Hopkins to primarily hire more academics to go and do gun control research. And on top of that, you have Obama uh, with the federal government spending tens of millions of dollars more there also on it. So you're going to be seeing a flood of research being paid for by gun control advocates over the next uh, few years. Wow. And so this is just, the movies are just, uh, you know, of course, you know, the hypocrisy with uh, Weinstein in terms of uh, how he's used guns in, in his own movies uh, to try to get attention. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's the Didn't hypocrisy. Didn't he produce Django Unchained and, and uh, The Usual Sally and all these yeah. uh, Loves reservoir Loves making money dogs. off the violence and, and, <clears throat> and, and that, but then when it comes to, you know, uh, his own beliefs, he's going he's gonna to go after the Yeah, array. all right. John Lott, thanks so much for joining us. I didn't know that about the foundations. It sounds to me like they're going to do for the gun control debate what they did for global warming, which is pay off all these scientists to come up with research and studies right. so that if you're on the wrong side of the issue, you're anti science. I mean, the science shows that gun control works, so you're just anti-science <laughs> if you're pro-Second uh, Amendment. Uh, John Lott, yeah. uh, thanks again for joining us. Dumbing down the courts, how politics keeps the smartest judges off